Section 21 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Margaret Espyat. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3, Section 21, Essay on Asivebron. Asivebron, or Asivebrol, properly Salman ben Judah ibn Gavirol, one of the most famous of Jewish poets and the most original of Jewish thinkers, was born at Cordoba in Spain about A.D. 1028. Of the events of his life we know little, and it was only in 1845 that Munch, in the Literaturblatt des Orient, proved the Jewish poet Ibn Gavirol to be one and the same person with Avicebron, so often quoted by the schoolmen as an Arab philosopher. He was educated at Saragossa, spent some years at Malaga, and died, hardly thirty years old, about 1058. His disposition seems to have been rather melancholy. Of his philosophic works, which were written in Arabic, by far the most important and that which lent luster to his name was The Fountain of Life, a long treatise in the form of a dialogue between teacher and pupil on what was then regarded as the fundamental question in philosophy, the nature and relations of matter and form. The original, which seems never to have been popular with either Jews or Arabs, is not known to exist, but there exists a complete Latin translation the work having found appreciation among Christians, which has recently been edited with great care by Professor Boimker of Breslau, under the title Avencebrolis fons vitae ex arabico in latinum transladus ab Johanna hispano e dominico condi salino, Münster, 1895. There is also a series of extracts from it in Hebrew. Besides this, he wrote a half-popular work on the improvement of character, in which he brings the different virtues into relation with the five senses. He is, further, the reputed author of a work on the soul, and the reputed compiler of a famous anthology, A Choice of Pearls, which appeared with an English translation by B. H. Asher in London in 1859. In his poetry, which, like that of other medieval Hebrew poets, Moses ben Ezra, Judah Halevi, etc., is partly liturgical, partly worldly. He abandons native forms, such as we find in the Psalms, and follows artificial Arabic models, with complicated rhythms and rhyme, unsuited to Hebrew, which, unlike Arabic, is poor in inflections. Nevertheless, many of his liturgical pieces are still used in the services of the synagogue, while his worldly ditties find admirers elsewhere. See A. Geiger, Ibn Gabirol und seine Dichtungen, Leipzig, 1867. The philosophy of Ibn Gabirol is a compound of Hebrew monotheism and that Neoplatonic Aristotelianism which for two hundred years had been current in the Muslim schools at Baghdad, Basra, etc., and which the learned Jews were largely instrumental in carrying to the Muslims of Spain. For it must never be forgotten that the great translators and intellectual purveyors of the Middle Ages were the Jews. See Steinschneider, Die Hebräischen Übersetzung des Mittelalters und die Juden als Dolmetscher. Two volumes, Berlin, 1893. The aim of Ibn Gabirol, like that of the other three noted Hebrew thinkers, Philo, Maimonides, and Spinoza, was, given God, to account for creation. And this he tried to do by means of Neoplatonic Aristotelianism, such as he found in the Pseudo-Pythagoras, Pseudo-Empedocles, Pseudo-Aristotelian theology, an abstract from Plotinus, and Book on Causes, an abstract from Proclus's Institutio Theologica. It is well known that Aristotle, who made God a thinking of thinking, 
and placed matter as something eternal over against him never succeeded in bringing god into effective connection with the world c k elser die lehre des aristoteles über das wirken gottes münster eighteen ninety three and this defect the greeks never afterward remedied until the time of plotinus who without propounding a doctrine of emanation arranged the universe as a hierarchy of existence beginning with the good and descending through correlated being and intelligence to soul or life which produces nature with all its multiplicity and so stands on the horizon between undivided and divided being in the famous encyclopedia of the brothers of purity written in the east about a d one thousand and representing muslim thought at its best the hierarchy takes this form god intelligence soul primal matter secondary matter world nature the elements material things see diderici die philosophic der araber im zehnte jahrhundert nach christus two volumes leipzig eighteen seventy six to eighteen seventy nine in the hands of ibn gabriel this is transformed thus god will primal matter form intelligence soul vegetable animal rational nature the source of the visible world if we compare these hierarchies we shall see that ibn gabirol makes two very important changes first he introduces an altogether new element viz the will second instead of placing intelligence second in rank next to god he puts will matter and form before it thus whereas the earliest thinkers drawing on aristotle had sought for an explanation of the world in intelligence he seeks for it in will thus approaching the standpoint of schopenhauer moreover whereas they had made matter and form originate in intelligence he includes the latter together with the material world among things compounded of matter and form hence everything save god and his will which is but the expression of him is compounded of matter and form had he concluded from this that god in order to occupy this exceptional position must be pure matter or substance he would have reached the standpoint of spinoza as it is he stands entirely alone in the middle age in making the world the product of will and not of intelligence as the schoolmen and the classic philosophers of germany held the fountain of life is divided into five books whose subjects are as follows one matter and form and their various kinds two matter as the bearer of body and the subject of the categories three separate substances in the created intellect standing between god and the world four matter and form in simple substances five universal matter and universal form with a discussion of the divine will which by producing and uniting matter and form brings being out of non-being and so is the fountain of life though the author is influenced by jewish cosmogony his system as such is almost purely neoplatonic it remains one of the most considerable attempts that have ever been made to find in spirit the explanation of the world not only making all matter at bottom one but also maintaining that while form is due to the divine will matter is due to the divine essence so that both are equally spiritual it is especially interesting as showing us by contrast how far christian thinking which rested on much the same foundation with it was influenced and confined by christian dogmas especially by those of the trinity and the incarnation ibn gabirol's thought exerted a profound influence not only on subsequent hebrew thinkers like joseph ben sadig maimonides spinoza 
but also on the Christian schoolmen, by whom he is often quoted, and on Giordano Bruno. Through Spinoza and Bruno, this influence has passed into the modern world, where it still lives. Dante, though naming many Arab philosophers, never alludes to Ibn Gabirol, yet he borrowed more of his sublimest thoughts from the Fountain of Life than from any other book. C.F. Ibn Gabirol's Bedeutung für die Geschichte der Philosophie, Appendix to Volume 1 of M. Joel's Beiträge zur Geschichte der Philosophie, Breslau, 1876. If we set aside the hypostatic form in which Ibn Gabirol puts forward his ideas, we shall find a remarkable similarity between his system and that of Kant, not to speak of that of Schopenhauer. For the whole subject, see J. Gutmann's Die Philosophie de Salomon Ibn Gabriel, Göttingen, 1889. End of section 21